Hi, I'm Brenda Kazire. And I'm Nancy Heyerman, and we're with Odonata Care. And we are going to talk with you today. We're a couple of nurses, actually. We're going to talk with you about eating, drinking, swallowing issues. And this is all related to a client or a patient who is having some trouble later on for, with a disease or later on in life. So we want to make sure that you know how to help your loved one eat safely and to swallow as best they can. So the, the goal is to, to eat up for enjoyment while being safe. That's right. Until we can or until we can't. Exactly. So we all also always want to, first of all, ask your, your patient, your loved one, what they want. Get them what they want as soon as possible because oftentimes people who are ill lose their appetite, lose their taste for something fairly quickly. So if you have what their favorites are right at hand, it makes it easier on you and the patient gets to get, have what they like and be satisfied more quickly. We also know that sometimes swallowing issues come to be with illnesses and later in, in life. And so we're just going to show you a couple of really simple um, systems to help swallowing. First of all, the tongue is actually the muscle that really allows us to swallow. So if you activate the tongue before you actually put something in a patient's mouth, they're much more likely to be, I'm ready, my tongue is awake, I'm ready to swallow. So you can play a game, have them stick their tongue out at you, just like when you were a kid, or have them just sing la la la, anything that gets the tongue activated and awake. Like, okay, I'm ready for something to come in. The other thing is the mouth gets very dry. This is due to dehydration, which is a normal state. It's due to medications. And um, so moistening the mouth, whether it's with a sip of water with a straw, with a straw, it's much easier to manage swallowing. And also um, making sure that um, you're, the patient is sitting upright and when they do swallow with a straw or out of a glass of water, their chin is tipped. We tend to do this and that opens our other airway and we have more chance of that going down the wrong pipe. So tipping the chin down to swallow is very helpful. I think a lot of us, when we take medications, it just seems a habit to put it in your mouth and then throw your head back so that the medication, the pill, will go over the top of the tongue into the back of the palate, and that's fine. Once you get it beyond the tongue, mm -hmm. then that's when you want to tip the, tip the chin down. It gives more space in the back of that esophagus. So it seems um, kind of backward, but you really do want to tip the chin down when you're ready to take the swallow. Okay, so what happens when someone really can't take care of their own mouth well? They can't brush their teeth anymore, they can't gargle. Then you need to help them with those things. Brenda's gonna talk a little bit about that. So just the practical parts of it. This, these are um, uh, a one version of mouth swabs. Uh, most hospices provide these for you. And first tip, don't spend 20 minutes trying to open it this way, which works, but it just, when you're flustered, I just take it, Pop the through it and go like that. It's just easier. Um, I take it, I have two glasses of water here because I take my syringe and I don't have it really sopping wet. I get it wet and oftentimes there's just a hint of mint in there and then I take the excess water off. Nancy has wonderfully volunteered to let me <laughs> give her oral care. I'm going to give this a try. So I'm going to um, rinse that. Okay, I always t tell them what I'm doing letting them know, okay? And again, just like the medication, I start by touching the lip, okay? Whether she's awake or not awake, if she's up, and then I just, I kind of roll it in, and then she's gonna tell me if she's open, like she's totally open for this. I'm gonna roll it in, and I'm gonna start around the teeth and the gum. Okay, she's letting me do more, okay? She's, and they're gonna really let you know. She can clap down on it, that's okay. That's a response, that's sometimes just a, a reflex, but it's not saying, leave me alone. Just leave it and don't try and tug it out. Just leave it. She will relax. It may even take a few minutes. That's okay. Just let it go and then take it out and you can try again later. And you can see they may need oral care, but we don't want to force that. Okay, so I've already been in there once. I take this and I rinse it out. Okay, it, the mouth can get kind of mucky. So I rinse it out and I, get, and I use the same swab. Now, if my glass of water is dirty, I get a new glass. Okay, having... Somebody help you out. T again, I don't take too much. Now, if I've moistened her mouth 
and she's sucking fluid off of the sponge, then you can add a little more fluid on the sponge and then they can control it. But it's very precarious. You don't want to get too much. So now that I've, I'm going to come back in again, she's let me and I've gone to the outside. Okay, now she's, so, and I'm going to just twist it. I'm going to get the roof of the mouth, the tongue. Okay, and that feels, it's like, you know how you feel after you have your teeth brushed and you, and there it is. Okay, I can go back in again. She wants some more fluid. It's very clear she wants some more fluid off that. And I just let her take the fluid off that she wants. Then always have some kind of lip balm or Vaseline and apply it liberally. The lips get dry and they get sore. And um, sometimes when their lips are slack and you're trying to take chapstick and rub it on, I just take it on your finger, a gloved finger, rub it between my fingers and then I just little massage around it and it feels quite nice. Again, it's if, if they allow that. Um, another thing is and I'm going to move on from once we do oral care, and you should always do oral care before giving medications. I believe Nancy already said that. Okay, the one I don't thing I did, and the reason you do want to do that is so that um, the, the mouth is clean, it's fresh, it's going to receive that medication, and the person is not going to spit it out. They're actually ready for something to go into their mouth. So that's one yeah. reason they're not going to they're not going to be surprised and just. Yeah, and, and then when out. you're putting in uh, medications on a dry mouth, it kind of cakes and it creates that layer. And the more often you do oral care, the cleaner the mouth stays and the more you prevent secretions. Um, if somebody's able to tolerate a little bit of fluid, whether it's water or a favorite beverage, including an alcoholic beverage, I learned as a young nurse, just putting a little, dripping a little bit of their alcohol, favorite alcoholic beverage, say they've had happy hour their entire life, and whatever it is, and you just drip a little over their teeth and their gums, the smell and the taste is very comforting, and they just relax. That's not always the case, but that, that is an option. Do you have something there for me now? Yes, a little bit of vodka. <laughs> okay. And so again, I just, um, I just put it here, and I just, not a lot, just drip a little, a little bit in there, and she's going to let me know how much she can take. It's often very little. And I'm going to re recommend, actually, before you even start this, I, as we said in another video, this little syringe that we use is only one milliliter, a fifth of a teaspoon. I actually recommend the people who are taking care of the client drop some water, squirt it in your mouth, and see how much it is. It's such a small amount of fluid, there's hardly even enough to swallow. And it will help you understand when you're putting it in the client's mouth that they're gonna be okay with it. They're not gonna choke on this amount of fluid. It's very little. And if they do start to choke a little bit, move their head side to side and let it go down. So uh, now we're going to move on to a little bit more advanced. Uh, in the active dying process, there's, there, there can be secretions that they're not able to swallow. That's normal. People have heard of the death rattle. Um, and the best way you can avoid having a lot of that, is first of all, allowing the body to do what it needs to do, which is the body is entering its dying process. It wants to be dry and quiet. It doesn't want a lot of fluid. And so the body will naturally get dehydrated, which will help prevent some of those fluids from building up. But there are still secretions, and you've, some people have heard of the death rattle or the gurgling. And the best thing you can do is positioning uh, laying them, moving them to their side. And as soon as people hear the, the rattling, they tend to put the head of the bed up and that's okay. But what you want to do at first is put the head of the bed down, even raising the fit and letting the feet of the bed and letting gravity help those secretions come out. And as they're laying on their side and you can take uh, a moist syringe or you can even take a dry one in the beginning and again, you can get in there and you can pull those secretions out that they're not able to handle. And keeping up on routine oral care every two to three hours and at least once or twice at night helps prevent that buildup. Mm -hmm. Remember, if they can still swallow, you really want them to be in the most comfortable position so that they're not hunched over in bed like this. They're not slumped all the way down. You want them to be up to the top of the bed so that when they bend, they're right at the waist so that their chest is supported, their neck is supported, and they're exactly the way you would want to be if you were given something in your mouth and expected to swallow. So really look at the position before you try to give medications, and if there's any kind of, as Brenda said, gurgling going on, really look at their position, 
manage it. So if you're able to get those secretions out, as she mentioned, by putting them down, kind of even upside down a little bit, turning them to the side, getting all the, the, the secretions out, then you can turn them back and bring them up into a more comfortable position. And, the, and back to positioning, I'm just going to, for a moment, if you're not positioning them, it's not because you're bad, it's probably because they seem to be uncomfortable, tense, painful, or anxious, and so you just don't touch them. Give them medication, wait 30 minutes, then do the positioning. Just think of yourself. If you've been in one position sleeping very long during the night and you move an arm, it might really be tense and sore and painful just because you've been in one position so long. That's what's happening for your loved one. And so you're gonna expect that when you move them, there will be a little discomfort. But if they settled right down when you get them into the new position, then their symptoms are in really good control. If you don't have a sponge, um, and you're like, I need to get the muck out of their mouth, because you can really have muck buildup in uh, Path of Comfort under um, secretions. Um, it talks about taking a washcloth, wrapping it around your finger, dry or moist, dipping it in water or having it, and just, but you know, reaching your finger and sweeping that out just to get that out. Of course, being careful that if there's any chance they're gonna bite down, don't go inside. Um, but getting that mouth clean. And you sometimes just have to get in there, but not knowing how to do it can be intimidating, but they will yeah. be more comfortable. And getting that stuff off the roof and all over. Yeah, sometimes it makes them gag, but it's very, you know, it's just temporary. But it, they're gonna be so much more comfortable if you can get everything out. Yeah. And so their mouth is fresh and clean. So don't be afraid to make them uncomfortable with the goal of making them much more comfortable after. And then your hospice nurse may or may not offer medication to help decrease the production of secretions, and um, which is, it is sometimes very helpful. Um, they may or they may not offer that. Remember though, it, it's drying secretions, so the mouth is gonna be more dry, so you really need to keep up with good oral care. And, um, and also the secretions can get a little sticky, so just keep up with the good oral care. I think that's it. Good luck. Thank you.